Here with Concordia head cross country coach Matt Beisel to preview the 2023 season uh, quickly approaching as we record this. I know you've had some time in the, the preseason already to, to get a look at your athletes and, and kind of build those relationships as well. But uh, last year, some good things happened, I think, on, on both sides. Men were second in the conference. Women get a at-large bid to, to nationals. What have you seen maybe so far this fall that makes you feel like you're building upon uh, last season's accomplishments? Well, we, so we had a week of preseason cross-country camp, and we just finished our first week of, of practice while they're in school. It's actually the first week I've ever had to do 5.30 a.m. practice because it was like 101 in the afternoons every day. It's like, oh, well. But we got a lot of good work done. The, we have 24 new freshman distance runners, and we now have a, a roster of 63. And so all of those freshmen came in and have just melded into the group. It, it's great. They're great people. And so the team chemistry is phenomenal. And so that's exciting because you need that. But from a performance standpoint, we did a 1600 time trial uh, last week, and I never in the history of me coaching here have I had so many people running very, very good times. Um, and I, I don't want to go into details on it, but it it blew my mind, and it was and it got everyone super excited, both on the men's and the women's side. And then we're going to have another trial coming up this weekend. So from early performances with the ret we were returning literally everybody um, except for a couple on the men's and women's side and while we those people will definitely be a difference we also have these great freshmen filling in and returners who got a lot stronger during the spring track season and I I'm really optimistic about what our year could look like uh, very cool I wanted to look at the, the men's team and then we'll, we'll Kind of proceed to the women after yeah. that, but you know you return a lot of key key athletes on both sides. Um, I guess Camden Cessna would be the exception from a, a men's perspective, but you, you mentioned a, a big freshman class and, and and all these returners. What does that do for your the depth of the the men's team first of all? Well, it's the largest men's roster I've ever had. I think we're at thirty, and and there is a lot of talent. And it's kind of like in, in our top 14, like, like, who's, like there's some good stuff about to happen and we don't quite know how it's going to shake out. But Camden definitely was a loss. He was a team captain for two years. He's a phenomenal young man. He um, received a GA position down at Kansas Wesleyan, so he's coaching them down there and I know he'll be great. But um, he, you know, here's a guy who ran 14.53 in the 5K for us as his final race. We're definitely going to miss that. But Calvin Rohde is running fantastic. He had a great track season. He's our team captain this year, and he is our top runner, um, and he's, he's running really well. And then um, you look at Trevor Kunsel, who um, had a, a little bit of health stuff going on fall of his freshman year. This is a guy that was a state champion in cross country, but we got that stuff figured out, and he really blossomed during uh, the spring and he has shown no signs of slowing down. He's, he literally was right with Calvin in the time trial and, and did it very well. In addition to Calvin and Trevor, we have you know six returners who were all impact players at the conference level in track and field this spring and then we have probably the strongest freshman class of boys I've ever had come in. Um, again, for those who know track and field in Nebraska, especially small school, running you know 10:15 or faster in a 3200 is pretty good. And I have three guys that have run under 10 that are freshmen, and three guys that have run under 10:16, and then I have two more right behind them, and they're going to do great. Um, I think they'll adapt to the longer distance pretty quickly. Every single year, I have probably two or three freshmen who end up moving into the top seven because they really get the 8K pretty quickly and then become impact players at conference. So I think that's going to be good. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to s expand on the, what the, how the men's program has developed over, over time. I know last year was a 
another step forward to be able to be second in the GPAC and, yeah. and you're, you're picked there in the preseason. Uh, what has it taken to kind of make those steps and, and get into a position where, where you're maybe uh, ready to be kind of a national at large qualify or maybe even challenge Dort too? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to take a lot. Dort is always strong and, uh, you know, they're ranked number two. They, they lost some really good guys, but they're also returning people like Peter Shippey and some of these others who, are, who had a huge breakout year last year. So, so uh, Dort's definitely um, a, a, a team that could do some big things in conference and nationals, but again, we want to be right there with them. And I think last year was a huge breakthrough for our guys' mentality and team, you know, even going into GPAC and then to get second in the GPAC. And that's huge. It is a tough conference. And so, um, again, I think our guys are hungry and they're like, we're tired of playing second fiddle. So they're, they're doing everything they can. Great team mentality. And I, I think we're going to see some cool things happen. Um, again, the ultimate goal this year is we, we really want our men's team to perform well enough to win or get second in conference, um, stay ahead of Doan, who's also very strong, and also run well enough overall that we do receive votes and get nationally ranked so that our guys' team can go to nationals, and, and that would be very cool. Uh, on the women's side of things, uh, uh, again, coming off a, a, a berth at nationals last year, and, and you graduated only one of those runners who who traveled to, to nationals. Right. Um, uh, what, what what can you say about the how that affects expectations when you've got so many that are experienced and used to having some success? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm I'm very optimistic about the women as well. We we lost Amy Martin, who was our number six runner at nationals, and um, she was had a great career for us. And then. At the same time, Kylan Freiberg, who's a multi-time All-American, national runner-up, um, made the decision to come back for her fifth year and use her COVID eligibility, which is gigantic. Um, Riley Hacker, who had such a great track season and was All-American in the 1500, she, this is her final year, Julie McIntyre, a transfer, um, who had a great year and also a big breakout year in track. Um, she's back and she's healthy and doing good. Um, my daughter Keegan, who ran exceptionally well, made our 4x8 at nationals, but also ran 18.37 in the 5K on the track. She is doing great. You have um, Hannah Bentema, who is right there with Keegan, and the, I mean that, that whole group of five. Then Rhea Kashinsky was on our 4x8 at nationals, running fantastic. And, um, and I think, what, that's six of them? And then you, then you add in Keely Green from Arlington, who already is showing huge early promise, which we knew she would. And, um, and then you have Elena Vargas, who's also running well. Both of those freshman girls are state champions, state runner-ups, and, um, and great competitors. And then right behind them is a whole bunch of other girls that are really good. And so it's like, what's going to happen? I don't know, but it sure is fun. <laughs> Yeah, just to follow up on that, are there any other um, big impressions you've had so far from from preseason, from from what what athletes are telling you and what you've seen from them? Uh, anything that stands out to you? I think the biggest thing is the the team mentality. Um, one of the things that I did a lot of thinking about this summer, a lot of praying about, is what our theme for the year should be. And I was explaining this at the Bulldog Athletic Association meeting, but. Our theme for the year is be where your feet are. And I, I know in the competitive world of, of distance running and so forth, it can be really easy to fixate and worry about, you know, will we qualify? Will I make this roster? Will I make this relay? And, and it's a tough thing. It is a reality that everyone has to wrestle with. And so what I'm trying to do is say, look, um, you know, C.S. Lewis talked in you know, about the screw tape letters, where it's like, look, God is a God of eternity, and He want, God wants us focused on eternity, and He wants us focused on the present, and it's this, it's the devil that wants us focused on the future and what might happen, and and so when anxiety and worry and discouragement come from worrying about the future, we know that's not coming from God, and so what I want us to do is keep our eyes fixated on Christ, but also focus on each other and enjoy the moment we're in, be where our feet are. 
feet are things that we run with, but it's also where we're planted and what our foundation is. And, um, and so I think that is something that's gonna keep our focus on the here and now, trust God for all the rest, control what we can control, love each other, these amazing people, and just build relationships and see what happens. And I think it'll work out the way it's supposed to. I'm very excited about that. Uh, I was going to mention Nationals is at uh, back at Fort Vancouver, Washington. Yeah. Uh, you're in Tallahassee, Florida last year. What do you, what have you enjoyed just about those different experiences? And, and I guess what, what makes Fort Vancouver a, a good destination? Yeah, well, Tallahassee, which was the first time they'd hosted, has an absolutely stunning course. It is one of the coolest courses, and they run NCAA Nationals there and things like that. And we act, caught a break. It was a cold front that came through, so it was like in the 50s and 60s when we ran, so it was beautiful. Um, but, but that was a lot of fun. And then Fort Vancouver is a whole other animal entirely. It is run on a national historical site where an old fort was and all kinds of things. And it's a lot of it's run on the side of a hill. It's twisty turny. And it, it is a very technical race where you've got to get out strong or you're going to get stuck in the back of the pack and it's really hard to work your way up. And so um, times typically are not going to be like you're not going to look at the times and go, oh, that was a really good race because it is a very technical course. Um, but what's really cool about Washington is is it'll be good temperatures typically, and then there's there's some cool stuff to do around there. Like we usually go to Multnomah Falls and check that out, and then we go to Cannon Beach, which is where the Go Goonies was filmed, and we usually go hang out there the night after the race and eat some seafood, and then come back. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to ask. I've been asking people about something fun they did over the summer how about something that you were able to do outside of to get away from some yeah. of us <laughs> well one of the coolest things that i got to do was uh, my son jonah he's 13 and he's going into eighth grade and um and i wanted to spend some real quality time with him just because the spring was busy and so he and i just kind of did a freewheeling trip we drove down into texas and and I kind of asked him, like, what are you interested in? He's like, let's do some fishing, let's do some fossil hunting, and some camping. And so we stayed at a bunch of different state parks, national seashore, um, caught some great fish. We found a bunch of great fossils and, and just had a great time really getting to know each other. And I think it has really cemented our relationship. And, and it was honestly one of the coolest things I've done. So that was, that was awesome. Did you catch some big fish then? We did. We did. Stripers and largemouth bass and drum and and wipers and white bass. It was it was at a place called Lake Whitney State Park down kind of near Waco and Austin. Uh, one other thing. What's a place favorite place to eat? Maybe out out in Lincoln. Me? Yeah. Oh wow. I I am. My wife and I love blue sushi. It is, like, we are sushi fans, and it is just the, I mean, I never thought 15 years ago I'd be a sushi fan, but it is the coolest combination of flavors. And again, I, you know, I'll go to Pack and Save and buy sushi, and it's pretty good, but Blue, Blue Sushi or places like that, we just like going there, and it, it's really unique flavors. So, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Oh, <laughs> electricity just went out. Somebody moved. I think the, okay. uh, 